I think in the league, the lowest we ever came was third at Man United. What, what do you think is the better team? That 99 winning oh. treble team or the City one from last year? He's tough. I just think it was maybe a little bit tougher back then. The 07-08 season, was that, do you think that was your best year? Your best oh, season? By far. You know, you see Sir Alex as, as a sort of a father figure as well. And it's someone you don't want to let down. So you had some incredibly famous teammates. Ronaldo would probably play on my side. All the lads are like, where's well, Tellinger run back? He doesn't need to run back. David Beckham, what's he really like? He's ledge. In, in football, it comes to an end. There's a lot more money in football now as well. I believe you went bankrupt. Yes. How did that come about? It's, it's one of the things that you, you hope people, especially this generation, don't get involved in. That's the only thing I ever regret. I've never left my house. When you are making a lot of money, you need the right people, don't you? I would say that's one of the things I didn't have. Well, my dad died pretty early. It could have hit anyone. A lot of people have been able maybe to get themselves out of it. I just couldn't, and, it, and it's, time to, it's time to move on now. Okay, so do you remember your first hair dryer treatment, the famous hair dryer treatment that you got from, from Sir Alex? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. never forget it. I wouldn't, and, and, and to be fair, it, it wasn't when I was even in the first team. Right, okay. You know, he would um, come and watch the Youth Cup games. Yeah. Um, and we got knocked out. So I played in the Youth Cup for two years. We got knocked out, probably the quarters both times. And um, the manager would always come to these these games and watch whether it was with Kiddo or somebody else. And obviously we got beat and he'd absolutely give it to everyone. Really? Yeah. And, and to be How fair, old have you been at this point? 16. Right, okay. Yeah, straight from school. Yeah. Um, 16. And, it, and to be fair, we, we had a coach called Eric Harrison, um, God bless his soul as well, who did a similar sort of hair dryer treatment. Right. Um, but I used to love it. Really? Yeah, I used to love it. I used to think, this is what it's about, you know. He, he wants perfection. Yeah. He wants he wants everybody to understand to get into the first team. He made me understand to get into the first team. You need to do better. Right. Um, so yeah, it was at a very young age. And if that, I guess it felt like a call to a higher standard sort of thing. Yeah, of, of course. And, and and to be fair, some people can take it and and yeah, so and some people don't. You know, they sort of dwindle a little bit and get upset and sulk and. I used to think it was a challenge, and and it, as a kid, you know, you see Sir Alex as, as a sort of a father figure as well. Yeah. Um, and it's someone you don't want to let down. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you take it all in and and, and get up, pretty much get on with it. Did the ones who didn't cope with it well, would they sort of bitch about it afterwards saying that was unfair, or how, how, did, that, how did they react? At that age, probably not. Right. But you could do with probably more of a bit upset, mm. more of a sulk. Um, I'll give you an example. I think I played, we were playing Leeds at Ellen Road once. Um, I was probably 19 now. And we were at half time, we were winning 1-0. Um, I, I thought I played pretty well, was playing pretty well. <laughs> and I remember the manager coming in and I sat down. And you do think, obviously if he's going to say anything, it's not going to be to me. Right. He absolutely destroyed me. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was honestly sitting there so angry thinking, wow. Uh, anyway, we went back out. I think we won the game two. It was 2-0 or 2-1. Then after the game, one of the, the lads that was the same age as me, he didn't. He, he was in the squad, but he didn't get changed. He wasn't sub. And he goes, uh, come over here. Like, oh, what's the matter? He goes, remember when, the, obviously, the manager did that half-time? When you all ran out, from the manager going from the angriest person you've ever seen, he looked at the other staff that it's money going to play them better now. But he was very clever. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That, that to me, that just, I, I love that. That, okay. that to me is my management at its best. And he's obviously figured out by shouting at me, he's going to get a reaction, a good yeah. reaction. Um, and and you can ask many, there's, there's many other stories with other players who do it in a different way. Yeah. But I thought that was brilliant. He's tailoring what you need depending on the yeah. person. It's, it seems like a risky management style. I mean, he obviously had the most incredible success, so it really worked. But it seems risky because if you get that wrong, I can imagine some players would be really pissed off or they'd feel like they've been manipulated. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, and he, he, you know, we probably worked out that he got it wrong a few times and then maybe changed the approach. Yeah. Um, and obviously I was there for a long time, so you can see the, the, the different ways the manager would speak to players. Um 
So you you know you just knew you just, if anything you, you give it a round of applause because you just think wow he's, he's, he works out how, he works how the best way to to get the best out of you and you've got to respect that to, at the highest level and we're talking big games we're not talking you know just in the league yeah you know cup finals um, Champions League he, he just got the best out of you. So you won the treble. You were nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Did you do you appreciate how big that was at the time? Probably not. And probably not. It was my first main season. I played two games um, at the end of 97, 98. Yeah, the last two games, because Arsenal have already won the league. Um, I come on as sub the second to last game against Leeds and then played the full game at, at Barnsley away. But then that next season, I was sort of in the squad. Um, and I'm just thinking, this is brilliant. This is not easy, but... You know, this team's unbelievable. You're there, you're, you're actually part of it. Yeah, and you, 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 in a way you sort of think, this is going to happen every season, mm. if that makes sense. And and to be honest, for a good few seasons, we it nearly was there or wasn't, you know, it was very tight. Um, I mean, I think in the league, the lowest we ever came was third at mm. Man United. So you can see the sort of standard, that's the, the standard the manager sort of um, wanted and... The players understood that as well. What, what do you think is the better team? That 99 winning oh. treble team or the City one from last year? It's tough. It's tough. I mean, it, it's different. It's different times and you've got to respect both teams because believe me, it's hard to do. Um, and obviously anyone in this day and age now will probably say Sitter. Um, but I just think it was maybe a little bit tougher back then in, in 99. Even like the subs, the, the squad, you know, it's probably not as big. You know, you've got a lot of a young younger players in there as well, yeah, um, as in youth team players. Um, so I don't know, it's tough. So if it was harder for you back then, surely uh, it's the uh, the United team. Well, I, I mean, yeah, but you have to respect City for what they did. Yeah, believe me, um, because them, I say the last six games, you know, it's all on the line. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So you might have to win a couple in the league. I mean, we kept we kept it to the last day against Spurs, you know, and then you've got the FA Cup, and then a week later. Um, it was normally a week later. You, you then play in the Champions League final. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's a discussion for everyone. But I'm very happy with my '99 team. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you play the whole season. If three games go differently, it could be nothing. Completely nothing. Yeah. And I was very lucky. I mean, I did play in the in the quarters, the semis, all the final. But just to be a part of it, especially my first season as well, um, you understand. I think I understood from a, an early sort of stage what what was expected and what the standard was. I mean, we had some brilliant players, mm. yeah. real real proper footballers who were who you know if it weren't going well, they'd, they'd proper tell you about it. Yeah. What sacrifices did you need to make to get to that level? Because you're an elite pro at probably the world's biggest club. Yeah, I mean, I was very lucky. I went to. Um, the National School um, Football Association called Lily Shaw. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, Michael Owen was there, Michael Ball, they we, we're the same age. So for two years, um, that got me in the right frame of mind to what was going to happen when you went to your clubs. Um, and it, it basically was, we, we played football every day and we played, we missed school one morning to play football. It got you in a really good routine. And obviously I'm playing against Michael Owen every day. Um, and then good practice yeah very good practice and then at the weekends we'd play every single club f from England so I asked we could play in Arsenal Man United so we played the best of the team and, and I don't think we got beat once to be fair but that puts you in the right frame of mind you know and I was we were only 14 when we first went there wow so what they try to do you have trials and then they, they tr try and pick you know, the yeah. best 16 players of the year, which you're never going to get right. Yeah, yeah. Because we're kids, aren't we? You know, people, you know, especially uh, the the way you grow, the, everyone's different ages. Were you like a, one of those who sort of developed early and you're ahead of people physically at that age? Or I was tall right, and fast. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I had body mass or... Yeah. Um, but as a defender, I, I was really fine with that. And it's only when... It was probably only when I had my first training session with Man United. I thought, oh my God. Mm. Which I thought, I don't think I'm good enough because it was against uh, 
Mark Hughes, and he absolutely bullied me every year. Uh, which How old would you have been that first 17. Time? 17 then. Mm, 17. Yeah. And it would normally be the other way around. I'd be normally a bit bigger than everyone. Of course. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're trying to win a header against Mark Hughes. Um, and I always remember Pally coming in. And that's the, the first session. I remember the manager going, well done, Wes. And I was thinking. <laughs> and I always remember Pally coming in and goes, no one wins a header against Hughes Wes, don't worry about it. If that, yeah. and, then, and listen, as you get, he probably saw it on your face, and he like yeah. he did a little. So I'm pick thinking I'm going to win a few, and he's just bringing it down on his chest and his knee, and I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? Because I'm used to winning my sort of them battles, um, but I was yeah, I was a good learner at football. He, you know, I learned quick. I learned if someone took advantage of me somewhere, I just probably wouldn't let him put myself in that position again. I try something else and something new. Um, so I was I was pretty smart like that. I guess if you're in the system and living that lifestyle, almost like a professional lifestyle from the age of 14, did that help in terms of keeping you on the right path? Because I imagine there's some people who need to get professional later on in life. They've already started, you know, they can get distracted by other yeah, things yeah. and they can get in the way. Oh, 100%. I didn't want to go. It was my nana. Uh, really? Yeah, it was my nan who said, I think you should go. I think it's a good opportunity. Um, but believe me, it just gets you focused. What, why didn't you want to go? Never left my house. Yeah, just daunting. It's a scary yeah. thing. You you probably give it, play it the cool one, like the hard one. But ultimately, you just be thinking, no, I need my mum and my dad. You know <laughs> what I mean? And that's a, that's yeah. honest truth. Because he, he was pretty much bored in school. So you'd come back every three to four weeks um, home. And every time I got on that train back, the, the homesickness was incredible. Really? Yeah. But you get used to it. And then you see the lads. And then pretty much like that, you, yeah. you're back into it. But it was probably one of the best things that happened to me, yeah, um, in that sense. I guess it's a younger version of what people say when you like go off to university or college or whatever. It's like you get a chance to grow up and I didn't do any be of that. independent. But I didn't do any of that. So yeah. all that side, when your mates are going out and, you know, for the first year with uni and stuff, they're having fun. And I'm in my hotel room or in my bed. So that we, we, you do miss, you do have to, you know, you do give up a, a few things, but... You know, I wouldn't change it in any way. Well, yeah, the rewards are yeah. massive, aren't they? Uh, fast forwarding a bit then to the 07 08 season. Was that, do you think that was your best year? Your best oh, season? By far. Were you the best right back in the world that year? <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> I did pretty well. And a lot of my problem, I used to get little, you know, little niggles here and there with injuries, with my knees. Um, I did two ACLs very young. And I'm not saying it, it just takes a little bit out of you, you know, when you in terms of speed or agility. See, people would tell me I was quicker before it, okay, which is fine. That doesn't mean I was slow, um, but just, just yeah, things would happen. They'd be more, they'd be getting sore, swollen every now and again. Okay. But that season, yeah, I just seemed to just fly through it. Absolutely no problems. I mean, it was a one of one of the best squads I've ever been in in, in my life. Um, and it was probably the, the the squad where I was obviously more mature as well. Yeah. And with the '99 squad, I was a young kid. With this squad, I, you know, I'm part of it. And I'm one of the guys on the team. And you must have been 26, 27, so 27, prime of your career at that point. 27, yeah. Um, it was pretty funny because obviously Ronaldo would probably play on my side, mm. on the right hand side, and all the lads are like. Well, tell him to run back, my mate. This is my mate. Tell him to run back with you. And I'm like, <laughs> he doesn't need to run back. <laughs> okay. It's as simple as that. So he, you're saying that because he's so good or you felt confident it, that you could come It's not that. He didn't need to run back. We sometimes would say to him, because you can work out little pockets on the pitch and mm -hmm. say, listen, for the first 10 minutes, I'm, don't worry about it. Okay. And what I mean by that is because if I, I, we know if you get the ball, you're going to cause them more problems than the other two are going to cause me. Right. So after 10 minutes, that stops anyway. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Well, everyone, we had good um, combinations all over the pitch and everybody understood everyone. Uh, and like I said, that season, the mentality was, we, we we need to go all the way here. We need to... Well, and that, that season, you did win the Premier League and the Champions League. Oh, no. Not quite the treble, which I think is a regret. You hear a lot of hundreds of players yeah. from that time. So and I hate that. Yeah, and, that, and when it gets brought up, it's always a talk. We always... The main thing for us is the FA Cup, yeah. because it was just one of them where we absolutely battered them, um, and we it just it was one honest. It's one of them days. It's just not happening. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And then we make one mistake, they score. 
Um, so yeah, that's when it gets brought up. We, we think about that because that team should have, you know, maybe done a bit more. Do, do you think that was United's strongest ever team? If you're talking about um, where what they did and where they got, and obviously you won't show it on the records because we got beat in two of the Champions League finals mm. as well. Um, possibly yes, possibly. And if those go differently, then yeah, I mean that get, team's being looked to at get in three Champions bit. League finals. I think yeah. that's you know a, a special achievement in itself, and um, you know we only won one at the time, which is a disappointment. But I think the lads can all be proud of themselves how they get there. But you come up against this Barcelona team that we beat in oh seven oh eight in the in the quarter in the semi final. Hmm. You know, and they want revenge, and they were very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they were very good. So to sort of say, okay, well, well, you have to give it them because they were class. You know, we were you know, one or two in the world at that time. You you can be proud of it. Mm. And probably a time, I guess, when the other clubs outside of the Premier League in Europe are probably stronger at that point than, than they would be now. Yeah, I, I would say that, yeah. Uh, I think a lot's changed in the, in the sort of, the bigger name clubs yeah um you know it's everywhere all over europe so it it was a it was a it definitely a, a a good time sort of to be around and what i mean by that is the big clubs were there and it was you know when you got to the quarters of seven it was you know big clubs big players in there um and it's, it's you know some of them games you'll never forget mm. you talked about your injuries do you know why you had the injury troubles you had? No, and um, you, you never know. I mean, I, one of them was definitely my fault. Okay, I broke my ankle once, and um, it was a qualifying game in Hungary. I can't remember the team. Right, it must be the first ninety second, and I was one of the players who got stuck in. And I remember the ball and was played. We was going out of play, and I could see their their guy running. I'm thinking, well, I'm. I'm Leave one on him. <laughs> so we both tackled each other when the ball's just got out of play and oh. I broke my ankle. So that's the only thing I ever regret about. Yeah. That's the only one thing. I could have let that one. Because you could have just jumped. I could have jumped over that. Yeah. You know, that sets me back four months and then it takes you a while to get back into it. But the, the other injuries, I mean, there's nothing you can do. One was done playing against Everton um, when Wayne Rooney was still there, turn. And the other one was the pre-season after the 99 season mm. um, again someone's gone to shop chopped it and as I've landed my knee's gone what can you do uh, yeah there's, there's not much you can do you can't say I would have changed anything um, like I said I was only young at the time so I'll get back to our conversation in a second. Before I do, I just want to ask you a very quick favor, and that's to click the subscribe button. So I'm really proud of the community that we're building with this channel, but currently 97.5% of people that are watching the videos on this channel aren't subscribed. Now, we want to have the biggest and best guests on possible. To do that, we need more subscribers and we need your support. So if you could just click that subscribe button, that would be massively appreciated. Let's get back to the show. So you had some incredibly famous teammates I want to ask you about a few of them uh, David Beckham what's he really like he's ledge yeah yeah top guy top man um, love what he's doing now but what a player mm. what a player I when people say what was he like and you say honestly he's, he's top guy still is um, and when you see him it's just the same but believe me could he play football yeah, yeah I've never seen anybody pinpoint a cross as good as him even to this day and these good people who can, you know, play yeah. football across the ball. He would, the, the strikers must have loved him. If you ask Coley, Yorkie, Teddy, Ole, they must have loved him because he would just need one touch and it, it'll be pinpoint. Mm. They're in the box, they make the runs. Rude as well. Rude yeah. And Nistel Roy. Yeah, he was absolutely brilliant. Do you think he's underappreciated, Bex, because he, the media stuff he, he's done is almost taken it, away a bit? In football? Yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, I mean, I'd say that about Wayne Rooney as well. Okay. You know, I'd, because of the management stuff he's done now. Or? No, I, I, what, I'm talking about football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Wayne is better than what some people think because right, it depends what where what time they, what sort of standard you're trying to put him at. But he would do a lot for the team, um, unselfish stuff. You know, to let other pay other people shine and um, what Bex did for the team was incredible. You know, he, he was part of that team that won the '99 season. Again, come through the youth system. 
um, battled his way up and, you know, England captain, um, phenomenal um, career. And what, what was the truth behind the the boot incident? Let's yeah, the boot. So we, were you there for that? I was in the change room, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever been in the Man United change room. You probably not. I, I actually have when I was like eight. Yeah. I actually met Sir Alex so you, when I was you like, would have seen. I can't remember it, but yeah, it was like a weird it, encounter. It was thing. A diff- it's different to what it is now. Yeah, yeah. And that shoe could have possibly hit anyone. Right, okay. Just a flick. Honestly. Wow. Regardless what anyone says, it could have hit anyone. in Because everyone sits pretty, was pretty close to each other. Mm. Um, and obviously back sits in the corner, the door's here. So when the manager's coming, his phone and everything kicking. It, 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 that's the way you would kick it. Well, it could have kicked. I don't know who was the you know each side of Bex, but it could have easily um, done that. It was just. We have to remember as well. A lot of people had their heads down because we just got beat. Okay. So you're not necessarily looking what's going on. Um, were, were you doing that or did you sit? Oh no. Well, he wasn't looking in my direction, so yeah. I was probably just trying to like, <laughs> do one of those. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. See what's happening, but yeah, like I said, it was disappointing result and. When the manager's going crazy, listen, you just got to take it. And when Beckham left, was how did you feel about that? Were you gutted or was the you sense of the team? For me, obviously, I was still one of the young lads. I'm just thinking, wow. Okay. You can't mess with the manager. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because David Beckham is one of, if not one of the biggest players on the planet at that time. Yeah. If you're talking about the whole everything, yeah. and you're just like, oh my God, wow. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, you're not thinking who's coming in we all know who did come in <laughs> yeah. but um, you're not thinking like that you're just thinking oh my god the, ma- the manager doesn't mess about and we have to remember um, you don't know all the personal details as well we mm. just see it as a teammate um, you don't know what's been said between them or through agents and blah 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 um, but you you know you do think like right, okay head down and just get on with it because you could be gone at any point um, to another teammate that you played with for longer, Gary Neville. No. Um, have you been surprised by what he's gone on to do after football? Hundred percent, no. Right? No, not at all. Nev was always the he was always the leader. Yeah. You know, he was he, he could have been in anything, anything sorted out. Never saw it out. Um, funny as hell. Okay. Always talking. Uh, like now. Yeah, it's uh, the same. But to me, that's just Nev. Do you know what I mean? And, and obviously it's different to other people because um, he's Man United through and through. So I can understand, you know, other supporters thinking, ah, whatever, no. Yeah. Uh, but very intelligent, um, knows what he wants, um, but but he executes it as well. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, he's, Gaz, is, Gaz is brilliant. And, and Phil's just as funny as well. Phil, his brother. Was was he a workaholic then? Because he seems like he definitely is now. He's got a yeah. thousand things on. They're all doing incredibly well. Yeah, and I, listen, I, I didn't necessarily, you know, work to work, so you go to work, but 100% he would have been exactly the same. Um, with whatever he was doing, he would have been on it 100%. Because that, that was never, if you needed something sorted out, never sort it out. Mm. Um, I remember when I was signing one of my contracts and I went to Gary Neville to ask him, Okay. And he helped me out on that. He, he was that sort He's of guy. That guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, and, and he would do anything for you. That's awesome. Um, on the other side of things, is there a player that signed for United when you were there that you were like, this guy's a waste of money, we shouldn't have signed him? Oh, give me an example. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously the, the, these players that are signed... Um, like Bebe, like, listen, that doesn't mean they're rubbish players. Uh, Just might not work out. I tell you what, here's one. Sebastian Veron, would you say that worked out? Uh, probably probably not. no. One of the best players I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But just didn't work out at the club. Didn't work out. Yeah. And he was big, I can't remember the fee, but it was big money at the time. It was, it? yeah. It was, I'm sure it was in its 20, 28 or something no, like that. That would have been my guess. Something, mm-hmm. something like that. Unbelievable footballer. Um, but it didn't quite work out, cons- you know, consistently. He'd have a good game here and there, but it just it just didn't work. And so sometimes, you know, whether it's the team or the shape or whatever, it doesn't work for that particular player. But I mean, he was unbelievable. Um, when a player comes like that, comes in like that, and it doesn't work out, can you tell early on? You're thinking, oh, I'm not sure this is going to work. Was there something you realise over time? I mean, I- again. 
sometimes I didn't think too deep into that. Yeah. Because you're just trying to do your own thing. Okay. Um, well, I don't think at any point any of the players that played with him said, no, he's not good enough. And, it, and, and, they'd, and they'd show it in spells and games. You know, you'd see it. But he just wasn't consistent. And um, sometimes you just got to put your hands up and go, okay. Another, another one's Gerard Piquet. Well, yeah, okay. Gerard comes in, or he's, he's getting to the age now where the manager wants to play him, but you've got Vidic and Rio. You know what, you, you try and keep him, or you've you got to let him go, haven't you? Um, and look what happens here. Too good to be sat on the bench, perhaps. Yeah. You know, young kid, brilliant on the ball, good defensive mind, um, but is he going to play at this time? He probably won't play for three or four years, because you, you've, you've got the two main the two main lads in. Um, so you do get players like that as well that come and go. Fair to say he had a decent career after yeah, that. Not. <laughs> a bit more, a bit more than he did quite well, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Um, if if I was to say the word underrated associated with a player that you played with or against, who comes to mind? Um, Jason Park, mm. Mikel Silvestre, I thought was brilliant. Um, John O'Shea. Darren Fletcher. A lot of these players would, you know, because you've got the more spectacular players, um, sometimes don't get mentioned as much. But Seen as the harder workers, perhaps. Very hard workers, know what they're doing, know what the team needs, um, will do their job to help somebody else. You know, them sort of players, by far, to me. Do you think you're underrated? Um, no, I, I think I did what I did. Um I would have liked to have played more, especially younger, but with me injuries, that does set you back a bit. Um, but like I said, even after that, the manager still had trust in me um, to put me back in when needed and then, and then continue. So in that sense, I'm just grateful, if I'm being honest, because I'm not sure that would happen nowadays. Um, but I would just, you know, I'd work very hard for it. So you mentioned um, Cristiano Ronaldo a few minutes ago. I mean, how much was of a freak was he? Because... He's always described as the person that works the absolute hardest, diets more strictly than anyone. Mm. Was was he always like that? And was that actually true? Still is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, what a guy. Funny guy. He's very funny as well. Okay. When he comes in, um, you know, all the tricks in the world. A bit scrawny. Mm. Um and what I like about Roddy is you, I think you realise on the second season, he's already realised that he don't know he don't need to do all this. He's worked out I'm just gonna be deadly and do you know, when I get into this position is for what for whatever reason he's worked out, no, this time I'm crossing it or mm. I'm gonna keep running with it. Um and he become yeah, he'd become a monster, absolute monster. Um, whether it was in the gym practicing, but in games it's it's all about in the game. You know, can you can you do it in the game? And he somehow worked out how to do it and and do it to the probably the quickest and especially in the Premier League at the time, the quickest I've ever seen like sort of a turnaround because he was always good. Yeah. When he first come, you know, he had the silks, but he worked out quick how to punish teams. So you're saying the quickest you've seen in terms of his development? Hundred percent, yeah. Okay. And like 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 I said, he had it. Yeah. Um. But if you ever watch his first few games, is a trick yeah, thing yeah. there. Uh, maybe the ball should have went in that time. Maybe he should have shot. Um, and he worked that out pretty quick when to do everything. And that's why he is what he is. Because obviously, yeah, he came and then he left as a Ballon d'Or winner, didn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, He came back to Man United. It yeah. didn't work out. Mm. Why Why do you think it didn't work out? I, I mean, I don't know. I He still scored a lot of goals. Um, and then obviously he's had a falling out with the manager. Um, for whatever reason and you know Ronnie's the sort of player that he needs to play and I suppose when he gets into a, a position where he's not playing he, he's just going to move on I mean the way it all happened is not good uh, in my eyes but like I the said, way he left the second time yeah not not at all you don't need all that what you the know? Piers Morgan interview yeah, you don't like that. need that okay. um, you, you don't think he should have done that not, not at all not at all but listen that's how he felt he needed to do it I mean um, I've never spoke to him about it, but you know that's how it happened, and 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 you move on. That's football, you know. And and Ronnie, what biggest name in football, mm. um, alongside Messi, 
So, you know, you, well, these sort of players can pretty much do what they want in that sense. Um, so, yeah, it was a sad, sad ending um, because everyone was glad to see him back. But, you know, you, it happened and you you just got to move on. What do you think of what he's doing now playing in Saudi Arabia? I like it. I mean, he's still scoring, isn't he? Uh, I still get you still get to st- the highlights are popping up on whatever sort of app you're on. They're still you're still showing the goals. Um, he's still got the appetite, so you've got to give him credit. I mean, he's he's getting a lot older now, but he's you know the 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 love for the game doesn't seem to to go anywhere. He wants to just keep on going and going and breaking all sorts of records. Would you have done a stint in Saudi Arabia? Had you know at different timings? Oh, had that been around? I went to India. I went to India, and it was funny because I was at Blackburn at the time. Uh, my knees are really bad now, and uh, after the, the that that season, you know, I, I was pretty much gonna leave it at that in the sense because I couldn't train every day. Um, do, you know, do you know what I mean? You were swelling up. But, was it like you could play but not really train, yeah, not do anything? But you're not the same in the fitness. You're not you're not match fit. Yeah, and you know, um, my old coach Eddie Mullerstein called me and said, "Come in there." I'm like, not sure about that because of my knees and stuff. And he goes, 18 games. And in my head, I'm like, you know, that would be really good, actually. Like, 18 games. Um, and, you know, mentally, I said to myself, after that, it's done. Happy days, you know, you finished on a, on sort of a good note. And I remember getting to about 15 games, thinking, oh, I don't run anymore. Uh, <laughs> only got three left. <laughs> only got three left. But anyway, I got you, you, you get through it. And it was brilliant. Absolutely love playing in India. Completely different scenario, um, lifestyle. Um, crowds are crazy at times. I mean, we got forty thousand fans for home games. Wow. Um, Corella Blast is it crazy? So, if you would have asked me that before, um, if I hadn't have gone there, I probably said probably not. Okay, but now you said that to me because I went there, I go hundred percent. Mm. If that makes sense, yeah, no, that makes yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So in my head, it's you know, it, it was always stay in the Premier League as long as you can, mm. and if something came up. But I could still play for a Prem team. No, I'd always stay in the Prem. It would be when you felt like that was past you, but you could yeah. still go do something out there. Okay. Um, do you think some players have gone too early to Saudi Arabia? Now? I mean, it's tough in it. I mean, the money's so good. I suppose. Um, what What can you do if you if you if you sort of iron it up? I mean, to be out there on the world scale, probably yes. You know, if you want to be um, reckon be recognised as the best that you can be. Um, but I mean, if that's what you want and it's good for your family, and and you know that's how you that's the path you want, I don't think you can complain about that. Um, you know, I still think we keep hold of the majority of the best players. Um, but yeah, it it all comes down to individual. You know what you want for you and your family. But um, if you're talking football wise, yeah, I mean, you're not going to get better than the Premier League. And is there always? I hear a lot of footballers, ex-footballers, say that you always want to play in the best competition. Mm. I, to some, I think everyone you hear that, and everyone goes, "Well, of course." That surprises me sometimes because and maybe it's my background as like a marketer, and we're picking like industries to enter. One of the things we're often looking for is easy competition. That's what we want to win. But it is genuine. You really do want to play against the best players. You don't want a I want to send me an easier ride. I understand what you're in. You know, you know, this is what I'm asking. 100%. That's, that's how I think. Okay. Um, you got to play against the best players in, against the best teams. Challenge yourself. Um, you know, and, and like I said, at United, very lucky. The, the teams that we were in, we, you know, I was involved in eight Premier League, um, being eight Premier League champions. Wow. I only won five because I didn't play enough games in the other the, the other one. How many did you have to play? Ten. I think they've changed it as well. Right, okay. The, the, um, the Premier League might be getting a letter off me, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm only, jo- I'm only joking. But yeah, I was involved in eight, yeah, but I actually won five. There's not a better feeling. Mm, okay. That's how that's how I grew up. You know, I, I wanted to, you want to win the league. Obviously, you want the Prem then, but you, you want to be in a team that wins. And when you're winning, you don't want to change that. I guess it takes that mentality and that's why you're a, Premier League legend and I'm a marketer <laughs> so, uh, so there we go um, so you left Man United why'd you leave? well it was, a, it was a funny funny one I mean I, I'm a very um, honest player um, and the 08-09 season didn't play that much um, 09-010 I remember speaking to the manager after the 
near the end of the season as as in and outs picking up injuries again. Um but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't I wasn't at the the best standard I could be at. Does that make sense? Like that feeling where at seventeen I get in and flying, you know, I feel like I can do everything at the best of my ability. I understand what the club's about. I understand that um you have to play at the highest level and you have to be, you know, at that level as well. Um and I had a I remember having a chat with the manager and I'm like, it's like what's up? I'm like, just not not quite as good as I was, boss. Does that make sense? You went to him and said that? Yeah, well, we was having a chat. I said, yeah, he goes, what do you mean? I said, like, my knees. I said, and, and to be fair, at the time, we had the, um, Chris Smalling came in and the Brazilian brothers, Fabio and Rafa, um, great lads. And, you know, they, they were getting, playing very well. Rafa on the right, he was doing a very good job. Um, and he's like, well, you know, I'm probably going to play these two, um, you know, a lot more. Obviously, want you to stay, and you you will play. Um, but if there's a chance for you to, to go, you, you can you can if you want. You know what I mean? And and that's hard because I've always been there. I've been there since yeah. I was twelve. Wow. Um, it was an honest chat. So he said, "Listen, you, obviously you can stay. There's, there's absolutely no problem." But then obviously a few offers came in, um, and I, I just wanted to play. Mm. Does that make sense? You yeah. still want to play. And no matter how, how honest you want to be, you, you still want to play. Um, and then that's how that came about. And I and people say maybe you should have stayed that extra year. I say yeah, maybe. But you know, sometimes you in in football it comes to an end at some point. Okay. Um, and I've I look. I used to look back at it and go, I've been in three brilliant squads, um, won lots of trophies, um, and and it's time to it's time to move on now. It was difficult though. Yeah, to make that decision. It was very difficult. I mean, the only staff I ever known was at Man United staff. And then all of a sudden you've got to move and there's all different people. Um, and they're not, it's in Sunderland, and not on the same level as Man United, so you've got to deal with all that as well. Was that quite a culture shock? When you yeah, 100% it? a little bit. Um, we're more battling now every week for points rather than we've let you know, three points go it or we've dropped two. It's a little bit different mentality. Sounds like you had a really good relationship with Sir Alex. Like, you were willing and able to go and have that conversation, not wait until he's going. No, I it, think it, it was always good. But like I said, he's always sort of been a father figure from from an early age. Um, and in, and like I said, if there was a problem, you could go up and speak to him. I'm not saying it, it might be different for other people, but because he's known me since a kid, um, and he understands me and um, he knows me, I think that's why it worked. Um, switching to your England career, how do you how do you feel about that looking back? So I believe you got twenty three caps. Yeah, I loved it, and and people always say um, twenty three caps. I said, yeah, but I was in the squad for ten years. It, it sounds really weird, and I only went to one World Cup, um, and we we had some good players in my position, mm. you know. Um, and I, I remember going through it with somebody once, and they were like, "Oh my god, <laughs> they were the centre backs," because it was probably just Gary Neville. Danny Mills for a bit, but it was probably just going over right back. Yeah. But centre backs, if we went through the centre backs, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's incredible. Um a golden era. So yeah, so English I was in, centre backs I was in a lot of the squads, didn't get in. Um and with and with England you, you, you normally are on the subs bench. You know, a lot of people, a lot of you get changed. Mm. But yeah, took twenty three times, very happy that I did that and I was very lucky to play for my country from under fifteens every level. So it was uh, you know, I don't um get angry or anything because people go 23 I go no I had a good time it was good okay uh, best and worst England manager you played under in that 10 year stretch ooh best and worst yeah the best um, was probably I liked Sven um, he was very good and I, and I had a good laugh with Capello as well to be fair okay because I, I would like recently there's been quite a few stories coming out about ex-players not necessarily liking uh, Capello no and that's what I mean okay because you don't know if he's joking or not when he used to speak to you right. does that make sense but I used to think that was pretty funny so he'd say things sarcastically a little bit as well but right. I've seen the funny side of it and you, you never really knew if he was meaning it in a really disrespectful way or okay. he was having a laugh with you 
Um, I mean, who else did I have? Kevin Keegan was my first thing, my manager, but he wasn't there for long. He gave him my debut. Steve McLaren, um, Fabio, and Eric. So I think that was it. He was the worst. I mean, it's it's tough to say because I didn't, I didn't play that often. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I didn't really get into really long conversations with with, with any of them. And I always remember when I did retire, and I I actually went to the. I got picked and I went and I seen Capello and I thought it was, again, he's funny. I the saying, boss, listen. Um, and he was, he was weird because I never knew how to tell him. I mean, how would you tell someone? I said, I know I've been picked. I said, I was like, I've been picked since I was 18. I didn't, I've not really played that much. I'm 30, 31 now. Um, surely you can give it to a young lad. That's exactly what I said. Surely there's an <laughs> up and coming young lad that can maybe take my spot. I'm not going to play, am I? Do you know what I mean? You didn't want to be part of what? Do you know what you not want to be part of it? Or? It wasn't that. It was, um, in my head, I thought to myself, I'm not saying it was the best decision, but in my head, I thought to myself, you get a week to 10 days off, and that would be so good for my knee. Okay. And on my yeah. life, I, it helped me tremendously. Yeah. Not training every day, because just then 10 days, it really helped me. So that was my view on it. Yeah. Why do you think England seem to always fail, even though we've had amazing teams? I don't know. It does me. I did. Does my I did. Um, I mean, even now we we've got a team there to win something. We have, and it it will be difficult again. Uh, and you know what? I hope I hope it, it goes well for Gareth in the in the next tournament coming up. Do you think Southgate's the right man for the job? Well, listen, I don't know. He, he's got us in close again. Uh, I love how the players respect him and how sort of the team bonding. I love all that. that, that it's really good spirit sort of thing. Um, but this, I, again, the, the quality is there, I think, to to maybe win some. And, you know, I'm sure Gareth will, will be hoping for that as well. Mm. So after football then, you didn't go and become a pundit like Gary Neville did. Um, how come? Any reason why? No, um, I rem- yeah, I actually went and did my BNA license. Um, and to be fair, I still coach a few kids locally now. Uh, and an opportunity came where I was just doing stuff for, for the club. So I do do some punditry, but it's more, it's, a, it's the local, um, it's it's in-house. Right. Um, and I do a lot of the ambassador work for them as well, for Man United, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely mm-hmm. love it. Um, like I said, I, I'm listen. I'm Manchester through and through, um, so it was a, it was a, you know, an opportunity that I thought, okay, I'd try it, and I really, really like it. You were saying before we, you know, started recording all the places you're about to go off to. Like it sounds like a fun. Yeah, it's good. It's something. I mean, I travelled quite a lot with the teams. Yeah, but believe me, you do not see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People always say you've been there. I say yeah, but I've not been there you've been on the training pitch you've been in the hotel you might have had one walk around for 20 minutes um but you've not you don't you don't see a lot at all um so like i said i really love doing that at the moment i guess as part of like that man united team you guys couldn't have gone anywhere without getting absolutely no i I always remember when we had pre-season especially in in somewhere and if it was in asia um and bex and g Absolutely <laughs> destroyed. Like, can't move. They did the old personal security wow. to get through. Brilliant to watch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to watch them go through. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> I always used to put myself, make sure it was behind G right. or Bex. And what I mean by that is because the the fans would be running off with them. Okay, <laughs> just sneaking. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was a, like I said, it was a. We we, we had a good time. Um, and when you look back now, it was a, you know, because when when you're up there all the time and you're battling for leagues and cups, um, it does it doesn't become the norm, but you you know that's what's expected of you. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then when you look now, and you know we've struggled for a good few years now, and yeah. so you appreciate the teams you're in and you know what you sort of give for the club. Um, did you like? I mean, you know, not perhaps on like Bex's level, but obviously a lot of fame would have come with your success as yeah. well. Did you enjoy that? Did no. you not like it? No, I stay stay and stay out of the way. Uh, it just wasn't my character. Yeah. You know, and um 
part and parcel of it. So, I mean, I think from the age of 14, I did my first autograph at the Milk Cup playing for Man United. <laughs> Again, you're thinking, <laughs> what's all that about? But, uh, I mean, you get used to it. Yeah. Because it, it's, that's just how it is. But yeah, um, it, it wasn't necessarily for me. And what was that like now? Is it less attention if you're out and about in the world than you used to get? And I was saying before, I don't look like anyone else. So people, even if they're not sure, they go, yeah, you're okay. Like, are you okay? <laughs> and to be fair, there's a few times I've lied, but it doesn't, that doesn't work as well. Well, so. you said, they said, are you Wes Brown? You said, no. no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just look like him. But I think that was a sort of a, when I was a bit younger, but now I just say, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and just get on with it like that. Okay. Um, changing gear a little bit, I wanted to ask about something that I believe happened last year, and then I believe you went bankrupt. Yes. Is that right? How, how did that come about? Well, it, listen, it's a, it's a long story, and and I won't I won't go into it to detail. Mm. But it, it's stuff that happened a long time ago um, with certain investments, um, and getting into stuff that you know, as a young kid, a lot of people go into. Um, you don't really understand it. It's what sort of a lot of people are doing. Um, and then it come to the head last year and, and that's how we went. And, you know, like I said, it, it, it's happened and I'm, I'm just good. I'm just getting on with it. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's one of the things that you, you hope people, um, especially this generation don't get involved in. Yeah. I've spoken to a lot of, you know, ex professional athletes and it's, one, it's been really shocking to me how common that story is. Yeah, like yeah. Run into real financial difficulties. Yeah. So I mean, what you you know, you say you get some things years ago. Is that is that bad advice? Is that people saying oh, they see you as a target because you're young and you've got like a lot of money? Said, it, some a lot of especially footballers were into, um, and a lot of people have been able maybe to get themselves out of it or were still involved in 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 sorting it out or whatever. But like I said, I just I just couldn't, and there was not much I could do. So like I said, it happened, and um, I think the main thing going forward for me is I'm very lucky to to still be doing what I'm doing. Yeah, you know, and and just like I said, getting on with it. Um, but yeah, it was a it's it's not a nice thing, you know what I mean. But like I said, I'm not the sort of person to to like cry about it or moan about it. I'm just I'm just gonna battle on and get on with it. Just crack on. Yeah. Oh, we had Danny Murphy in here and he was saying he was involved in like a film scheme thing, was it? It's a, it's similar things, yeah. Similar things. Yeah, all the similar things. And and like I said, as a player, you don't understand about anything like that. Yeah. You know, you're just listening to people and and um, you go, yeah, yeah, no problem. Let's do that, do they? Um and like I said, it's 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 still ongoing now, to be fair. And we'll see what happens. It, Maybe, you know, this would not be like a Sir Alex wouldn't be part of his role, but did he ever say to any of you players, you know, you guys are making millions, just take 10% or whatever and just stick that somewhere? No, not at all. I mean, a lot of everyone have their own people. It's as simple as that. Um, it might be different now, and but back then, you know, you had your own people and you sort of listen to who you listen to. Have you had any players reach out to you you know, since that came out and say, oh, I'm working with someone, I'm not sure, what advice would you give? No, I've had a lot of players that I said they win. You know, I'm in the same thing. Wow. Um, obviously, I'm not, I won't say names, but yeah, I mean, it's one of them and it doesn't necessarily mean that the same outcome will happen to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's stuff, like I said, when you're kids, you don't really understand it anyway. You just assume a lot of people are doing it and it's fine. You don't, you know, you're not, that's not your life. You're just playing football. Um did you have any friends, family trying to offer advice when you were younger? Like, well, obviously, um, you might have like a dad or you know, or an aunt or whatever. Say, yeah, I mean, no, my dad died pretty early. Mm. Um, my mum's my mum, so in that sense, not 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 family business wise. Yeah, no, no, not at all. And like you said, then you you know you as you're getting older, you're trying to work out who you can trust and who you can't trust, but. Like I said, I mean, that, that's in any form of life, isn't it? I mean, that's in anything. So, um, yeah, like I said, what's happened's happened and um, I'm I'm just getting on with it. I know you said you want to go into details. I completely get that. So I'm not going to ask about the specifics of it. Mm. But whatever you, what you got involved with, was there a sense of, because you must have made, I mean, have you ever worked out how much you made playing? No. 20, 30 mil? No, it never, ever. You never, you never cal made that calculation. No. But it must have been a huge number, right? 
did, was there a sense of like, if I'm going to get involved in anything, I'm going to put just some to the side for extra security? Yeah, of course. But when even that, when it comes to it, you sh you know, it's a, when it amounts to a lot, that doesn't doesn't mean anything. Um, it doesn't what, matter. Which, which, what do you mean? Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've got saved. Um, you know, if, if the if the HMRC want the money, right, they take it. So, so you've got a, because it doesn't of, matter, right? Okay. So in that sense, it didn't matter. Did you um, did you spend frivolously no. as a player? No, not at all, no, you weren't that. Sort. Look at me. <laughs> You're not Lamborghinis. And, uh, no, no, flying not, private and all that. Definitely not one of the um, you know buying this game and that game. No. Okay, interesting. Um, we talked. Well, we talked about what I said about some of the other footballers. Is and I've said it seems to be much more common than I expected it to be that they do run into financial difficulties. Mm. Is that a product in part of how much money is made so young? Do you do? You, did you get a sense, maybe in yourself, maybe other players, that like? The money's so big, it's so young, it's always going to be coming in. I'm going to be fine. I can spend it or whatever. Yeah, I think the main thing is when you when you are making a lot of money, you need the right people, don't you? Yeah, you need the right people, and I would say that's one of the things I didn't have. Um, and like I said, it was different as well, and it was a little bit different. It wasn't, you know, lots of people you go and speak to. You just you maybe meet people and do this, do that. Uh, and like I said, I wasn't interested in any of that. You, just, you said yes and that was you just got on with it I guess it was like you didn't want to have to think about it you yeah, wanted to just crack on with playing football, yeah. I know I've got a lot of money but yeah you just you just get on with it um, and, and that's pretty much how it went for me and I'm pretty sure it's changed a lot now mm. um, but yeah that's that's just the way it went because I mean I you know from what I do I know the financial industry is so heavily regulated that if someone is in that position if they contact a financial advisor you know they should be fine who's going to give them decent advice it shouldn't have to be um necessarily a difficult thing to find or as you say it, it would have been very different yeah, when, yeah. Uh, when um, when you were doing it um yeah okay um what's your biggest regret maybe 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 that <laughs> maybe something else no, no, no do you know what not a thought i always think things, things happen for a reason um like i said i've got a good character um and i just get on with it um still got a good job um, and just you know, you, you, great kids, um, you know, really good close friends. So in that sense, I, I just get on with it, and that, that, that's just my, part of my personality. You seem so calm about it. I think, especially if I'd been given advice, I didn't feel like it was my fault, which it absolutely sounds like that's the case with you, right? I, I think I'd be so angry. I'd be like, I now have, to, I miss out on this things. My yeah, kids I get might it. miss out. I get it. Sort of but stuff. what's the point in dwelling on it too much? You now got to just do what you've got to do um, and get on with it. That's very stoic. Yeah. Very admirable, I would yeah. say. Um, so Man United haven't done anywhere near as well as I think as most people would have expected post Sir Alex retiring. Yeah. Did you expect uh, this sort of spell to happen when he when he announced he was done? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I think it was always going to be dif difficult once, the, once Sir Alex left. And that's just as simple as that. Um and yes, we've we've won some trophies and stuff, but um, we, we would have thought we'd be, you know, we probably would have done better than we have done through the years. Yeah. Um, so it's been quite difficult, and you know we've had some top managers as well. Mm. So um, it's not it's not been ideal. A lot's been made in recent years around the attitudes of a lot of the players. People getting very frustrated with Paul Pogba, Marcus Rashford recently. Mm. Have you? Because I guess to you, playing for that club means more than just about anyone. Because you did it. Have you been frustrated with players over the last few years, thinking they're not giving their all? Yeah, I think. Listen, I think the players on on the whole. Um, I mean, these this, this times. I mean, like, like I said, I've been to every probably every home game, not not the away games, but every home game. You know, just the work ethic at times. Um, when I mean, even from from playing a, a kid myself, you just give it everything. Yeah, you know, and you know, I, thought, I think football's changed a little bit over, over when I was younger to now. But still, you know, Man United is for me the biggest club in the world, and mm. if you pl to be playing for him, you you have to give it everything. Um, so in that sense, it doesn't mean that sometimes I'm not trying, but it's just not quite working for whatever reason. Um, 
and we've we've just not got to the the standard that we want to be at. What, why do you think football footballers are different now in that way? Because I imagine when you're coming into that team and you're in your late teens, I imagine there were senior pros that would never have let you not try your all. No, not not at all. But is that I mean, different now? Of course, there's lots lots of things different now. Social media probably being the biggest one. Okay. Uh, and yeah, Twitter just came out. I think when we were just finishing off, but um, just there's so much for them to to do now, and you know, with their own personal selves, build up their selves as well. I mean, it, everyone says people say to me when we have the, uh, it's, we talk about it, they shouldn't do that. I said, yeah, cool. you would, I would have done it if I was in this. You okay. would. That's that's what that's what everyone's doing. That's 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 part of life now, mm. and you know, it's who deals with it best, I suppose, and. Um, so in that sense listen that us older players will be like we would have done that I think you would have done not everyone but I think you would have done uh, so I mean, like said, I've got Instagram all that stuff now but I, I don't use it I don't look at it every minute because that's check the, the comments how well, many that, likes well, that's the area we would grew up it don't really bother us does it um, yeah. but that's just the way it goes now and there's lots of things to do. Like for us, it, for me, it was just football. You know, I just want to play football. Do you think you were lucky that you basically got your you got your playing career in just before? In that sense, yeah, because my full focus was on football. I wasn't worried about what I needed to do next week and, I don't know, do some post or I have to go where to do this. And this, there's, a, there's a lot more money in football now as well. And what I mean by that is there's a lot, for, lot more for the lads to do. And we might do... Okay stuff with sponsors I don't know once every two months something like that if that um, really yeah. was that, that that infrequently it wasn't a lot at all honestly it wasn't a lot they'd be doing so much more than that now sure. so much but that, and a lot of that's not their fault it's, right. it's, it's, it's everything uh, so in that sense that's changed as well so you can't just put it on the players um, but yeah I mean when it, when it comes to the games you just want to see the games put everything the, 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 the players put everything into it um, but obviously, United are a club, but we, we need to win, don't we? And that's the truth. It's, it's part of our history. We, just, we need to be up there challenging. Um, and listen, we've, we have to be dropped off. Um, it's as simple as that. And looking forward, big changes have been made recently. Yep. They're in the process of being changed. Do you think this is about to turn around and Man United will be competing for Premier Leagues again very soon? I, I do like um, what um, Sir Jim has come out and said and the way he's looking at it, you know, the way he's focused on everything. It's it's about the first team, first, you know, on the pitch. And I think that's the main priority, like he said. And I, I honestly think he will. You know, I think he's, he's, he sounds really good at um, the sort of things he's implied and what he wants to do for the club. Hmm. he just got to give it a little bit of time now. Um, I think once he's, you know, it, it all came to, to news that, you know, he, they bought their stake and yeah. he's, he's gone pretty quickly in what he wants to do with the club and what he wants to happen and I think everyone's really really chuffed with that in the, in that sense obviously you know as an ambassador to to the club um, I guess you know a lot of staff still and people involved in the club what's the feeling like when someone comes in like that and there's they know there's going to be staff changes is there like a nervousness around an excitement yeah. a bit of both well yeah probably a bit of both I mean, I mean, I don't necessarily know everything that goes off at Old Trafford in the offices. I don't necessarily know right, that. Right, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I wouldn't have a clue, but ultimately, I think he's looking to do the best for the club mm. um, on and off the pitch as well. I mean, United do very well off the pitch, but it's about on the pitch um, that that obviously needs to be looked at and to, to get back to the standard you want to be at. And that's challenging. That's challenging all the time. Like I said, for the trophies, and um, I'm sure you'll have a really good plan going forward for that. Awesome. Well, Wes, thank you very much for um, coming and speaking with me. Really appreciate you uh, you taking the time. Um, you mentioned that you've got socials and things. You might not be very active, but anything you want to mention, you want to send people to things you're involved in. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I would. I wish I would say yeah, but no. <laughs> well, that's also very honest. You know, I always ask in case people do, but no problem if no. Not. Absolutely, I'm fine. <laughs> Thanks, Wes. Pledge, thank you. 